This is ABC 15 mornings. Well, we thank you for starting your Sunday morning off with us. Go ahead and stretch it out bright and early this morning. <laughs> I'm Nohe Lani Graf. And I'm Justin Pizzera. Here are some of the top headlines that we are working on this morning. Could we see a repeat of two years ago? Demonstrations are already being planned around President Trump's rally in Phoenix next week. And nothing says romance this Valentine's Day like a swan-shaped pedal boat on Tempe Town Lake. But there's a new kind of fleet being added. Hollywood's biggest stars and biggest awards night is finally here. And this year marks a potential comeback for some of the nominees. We are live from the Dolby Theater in just moments. But first right now into the East Valley where the investigation into a deadly crash continues. It happened on the I-10 near Warner last night. Officials telling us five vehicles were involved in this one. One person was killed in the condition of the other drivers at this point not have not been released. Investigators say that they are still working to figure out what caused that crash. Now we want to get you prepped for your Sunday fun day with that most accurate forecast. If you're heading out the door for an early tea time this morning or off to church, you're definitely going to need some long sleeves. It is cool this morning, more mild than we've seen earlier this week, but still chilly at that 42 in Goodyear. That's one of the cooler spots. 43 in Glendale Mesa and Phoenix, a little bit more mild in the upper 40s this morning. If you're wanting to hike and catch that at sunrise, you've still got a little over an hour here. Sunrise at 718. It's still going to be in the 40s at that time, though, so just be ready for that. By midday, if you want to wait for a hike at lunchtime, it'll be really nice. Mostly sunny skies, upper 60s, and then I do think we warm into the 70s and stay there through sunset at 607 this evening. Then big changes are headed our way. I'm going to talk about rain and snow chances, and also if you prefer to head up a different kind of mountain that already has snow. That's coming up in just moments. Well, just days after getting into a serious crash in Gilbert, we are learning a 17 year old has died. So friends of that teen say that he was a junior at Higley High School. Police telling us that four teens, they were involved in this crash. Three of them in one car hit a light pole. One of the people in that car, the teen that died. He's a free spirit. He did. He did whatever he set his mind to and he, he mastered it. Everyone loved him. Well, police are still investigating the cause of the crash. The other three teenagers involved, we are still working to find out their condition. ASU has canceled a summer study abroad trip because of the coronavirus. Students who are already studying in China have been given the chance to return early and also warned that their health could be at risk if they choose to stay. One member of the ASU community has already been diagnosed with the coronavirus, and we still don't know if that person is a student or a faculty member, but we do know they caught that virus while visiting Wuhan. That is the center of the outbreak. Protests are already being organized ahead of President Donald Trump's visit to the Valley. Let's turn Arizona Blue posted the event on their Facebook page saying that their demonstration is going to take place at 3 o'clock on February the 19th. That is the same day as the president's rally at the Arizona State Fairgrounds. So back in 2017, his rally turned into riots after police say that they were forced to use tear gas on protesters with bottles and rocks. Interviews get underway tomorrow for the position of the Maricopa County Assessor. The position was previously held by Paul Peterson. He resigned last month amid charges he paid women from the Marshall Islands to put their babies up for adoption in the United States. Okay, we want to lift you up a little bit this morning. We are really excited because tonight is the night in Hollywood. This is the biggest one of the awards season, the 92nd Academy Awards taking place at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood. Live view for you this morning. You can see the canopy is up, but finally this morning we're getting a look through it right, at that, that red, iconic red carpet. Yeah, you can see the red carpet right there. Yeah. So here's a little bit of trivia for you. That gold statuette stands about 13 and a half inches tall. And I've always wondered this when they're holding it. How mm -hmm. much does it weigh? It weighs eight and a half pounds. Yeah. So another piece of trivia for you during World War II, uh, there was a metal shortage. So the statuettes, they were actually made of plaster for a few years. And I heard that one of the first times that the tickets went on sale for the Oscars, they were just a few dollars, like literally under $20 
per ticket. Yeah, now you need like the exclusive invite from somebody to be their guest <laughs> right. or be working the event. And also, uh, interesting, eight pounds a piece. So when they get multiple, if they're one of the lucky ones, then you know it's like a full workout right. for them, right? They might as well skip the gym that day. You know, so by the end of the show, though, by the end of the night, yeah. I should say, we're going to know who's taking home one of those gold statues. So ABC's Romina Puga is live at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood, giving us that behind the scenes look and letting us know what we can expect later tonight. Good morning, Romina. Go. No, hey, Justin, as the final touches are being put on the red carpet behind us, many are still wondering who will take home those golden Oscar statuettes tonight. The red carpet is rolled out and ready. And tonight we'll find out who's taking home one of those coveted Oscars. The show is going hostless for the second year in a row, a format that raised viewership last year. Even though there's not a host this year, you can still expect there to be plenty of star power at the Oscars. There will have big name presenters, big name performers. It'll be a very, very Hollywood centric night. A historic night for some. I'm gonna be free or die. Like Cynthia Revo, who would be the youngest EGOT winner, which stands for Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony, if she takes home an award. It's just so crazy, though. It's crazy. And, you know, it would be a huge honor. Um, I don't know what I will do if it happens. The pressure has been building for the nominees. The best supporting actor category this year is completely stacked with acting legends. Tom Hanks, Anthony Hopkins, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and the youngest in the group, Brad Pitt, all Hollywood veterans. Are you an actor? No, I'm a stuntman. One film critic favorite, Laura Dern, has already taken home several other awards this season for her supporting actress role in Marriage Story. Part of what we're going to do together is tell your story. But will she also win that golden Oscar? And South Korean thriller Parasite, wowing audiences and critics alike with six nominations, likely to win Best Foreign Picture, but is also nominated for Best Picture, only the sixth film to ever be recognized in both categories. Every year, the show tries to cut down its runtime. Same drill this year, with only 90 seconds for the winners to make their way to the stage and deliver their acceptance speeches. In Hollywood, Romina Puga, back to you. No, hey, Justin. Thanks, right, Romina. Thank and I love that she's glitzed up already yeah. this morning, too. She's already setting the tone for the day. This could also be a huge comeback year for some veteran Hollywood actors and actresses. Yeah, they are competing against each other in the uh, top acting categories. Oh, there are some tough fields. There really that's for sure. is. A lot of the nominees, they're pretty much household names, mm -hmm. but have not been nominated in years. Actors like Brad Pitt, who has never won an Oscar. Well, that's, I think, shocking for a lot of people. I, He's been nominated, but never won. Right, I'm shocked. So uh, Brad Pitt, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, Anthony Hopkins, and Tom Hanks. The best supporting actor category this year is completely stacked with acting legends. And remarkably, Brad Pitt is the only one who doesn't have an acting Oscar. That's so crazy. Now, as for the women, Renee Zellweger, who I think is, I think she's going to take it. She's been sweeping uh, yeah. a lot of the award shows. Yeah, yeah, Laura Dern and Kathy Bates. I love Kathy Bates. Uh, they're all competing for the chance to win an Oscar this year as well. It definitely is the year of the comeback. There are a few newbies, but there are a lot of heavy hitters who've been around for a long time. Uh. Well, keeping with this big award weekend, the Spirit Awards taking place last night, honoring the best in independent films that were made with under $22 million. So the big winners last night included The Farewell, taking the best feature film, and also Parasite, taking the best international film, which, of course, as you heard in Romina's story, is also up for best picture in the Academy Awards, too. So it's got a double double up. We did see that in that live picture. They have the uh, canopy over the red carpet. Yep. Los Angeles today expecting rain and then that rain expected here in the valley. Exactly. So we're glad that it's going to be on delay for right. us so that we can enjoy the second half of our weekend here because I think it will be nice like yesterday, but we're just going to see a few more clouds as that storm system starts to approach. But we stay dry for today. That's the good news. So let's talk about that most accurate forecast. If you want to head to the high country and you're thinking, hey, I still love that it's winter and I want to get in my skiing and snowboarding while the season is still going strong, do it. I think it'll be mostly sunny skies up on the mountains today too. We've got a solid base happening at Snowball and Sunrise, and they are certainly expecting more snow this week. 
on both of those ski areas. So here's what's next. We're going to stay warm today. You will see a few more clouds roll in in the second half of the day and into tonight, and then our rain and snow chances return Monday and Tuesday. I'm going over that coming up in that full forecast. Well, the new season of the XFL kicking off right here on ABC 15 on Saturday with the uh, Seattle Dre uh, Dragons, excuse me, taking on the DC Defenders in front of an enthusiastic crowd of more than 17,000. The Defenders uh, coming out on top 31 to 19. And of course, you can catch the games every Saturday right here on ABC 15. Mm. Well, just in time for Valentine's Day, Tempe Town Lake is adding two new kinds of pedal boats this week. You just tried them out yesterday, you said. I was just there yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. The new Dragon pedal boats, though, are duck-shaped pedal boats, and they're going to be joining the fleet of swan pedal boats. So you've maybe seen the swans just like that already. So now we're going to see some ducks adding in. Some couples can rent them, and you can take a cruise around Tempe Town Lake. It's perfect for a little romantic date. You do need the smaller crowd, though. It's a couple's thing there for those, but they have other options. The new boats are going to be unveiled tomorrow morning during a special event starting at 6 a.m. And they're going to have boating lessons and also sunrise yoga first wow. thing in the morning. There's actually, a way to start your day. I actually did see one of the uh, dragon pedal boats. Yeah. Oh, really? I think I got maybe a little sneak peek of it. It's Ooh. pretty cool. Yeah, okay. it's pretty cool. All right. Well, if you want to get out and maybe do something today, you can catch uh, some of the top stunt pilots in the country. They're going to be out in Buckeye for their airfare. The special air show is happening at the municipal airport today from 9 to 3. You can catch the stunt air show. That's going to be at noon. It's going to last for about two hours, but there are hundreds of other planes on display. Well, much needed rain hitting parts of Australia amid those devastating brush fires, but it's not all good news here. The new threat the country is now dealing with. Boy, they just can't catch a break. Also, a tour bus going up in flames and the famous country singer on board who was able to capture those dramatic moments. And are you cheating when it comes to finances? The new report showing how many people are hiding money from that special someone. A mass shooting in a mall in Thailand coming to an end overnight after more than 12 hours. Investigators say a Thai soldier armed with a machine gun opened fire on dozens of people at one of the largest malls in the country. 26 people were killed and 57 were hurt before the gunman was finally shot and killed overnight by a SWAT team. Authorities say the gunman was a soldier who before the attack got into an argument with his superior before going on that rampage. Here in the USA, a tour bus going up in flames, an award-winning country singer, Neil McCoy, was recording as he escaped those flames. McCoy and his team heading to perform in Louisiana when that bus just suddenly caught fire. The bus was a total loss. Authorities say that they believe a mechanical issue caused that fire. McCoy's show last night did go on as planned. Severe weather in parts of the Pacific Northwest prompting the National Guard to have to jump into action and help people evacuate. Heavy rains flooded parts of Oregon, putting hundreds of buildings underwater and forcing more than two dozen evacuations just in the last three days. Just as many people were displaced as well, and you can see the damage and you can see the water line as well on those homes. Also overnight, Red Cross shelters having to become home for people who have now lost everything. It's hard. I mean, the, these people, all their cars are gone. They're, some of them said they're floated away. Yeah, there's really no way to save all of your stuff when the water is just rising in your home. The storms are clearing today, but really it could be days before people can go back to their houses to try and assess the damage and see if anything is salvageable. It is a bittersweet development in Australia after Cyclone Damien hit the east part of the country this weekend, bringing heavy rain and strong winds. And while the rain did finally put out at least one of the many fires that are still burning across that country, if you can believe it, it also brought widespread damage as well. There are still 42 fires burning in that state, 17 remain out of control. And now you can see even where the flames are out, flooding, major flooding at that is an issue that they're dealing with there. The poor people of Australia know, cannot right? catch a break. I mean, we kind of know what they're going through. I mean, we see those wildfires here and flood, right. the flash flooding and all of that. Monsoon, so soon, yes. Yeah. So we certainly, I don't think are expecting a really heavy rain event out of this next storm system. 
but some areas of the valley could see up to a quarter inch of rain, so it's still going to be pretty wet in some places. For the rest of the weekend, though, we're going to continue to see clear skies until the second half of the day and then a few clouds will move in this afternoon late e or late afternoon. I should say around five o'clock. We start to see that first little storm burst off to our southeast down in Tucson. Then it becomes a little bit more widespread over the southeastern corner of our state areas like Globe and Safford overnight tonight. So after midnight and that's when we start to get just a slight chance of storms kicking into the valley as well. Our stronger storm chances come the rest of Monday afternoon around two o'clock we start to see another section move up from Gila Bend and in the Ajo area and we can't rule out the chance of scattered thunderstorms that pushes over the valley and then late Monday night it seems to pass by and we start getting more snow along the rim and in the White Mountains and then we still could see a scattered shower moving into Tuesday before we finally dry out Wednesday so dry today best rain chances tomorrow into Tuesday and then we dry out for a a couple of days and then we're tracking the possibility of more rain next weekend. What's also going to happen today is the breezes are going to kick up statewide. So by noon we start to see the winds pick up to our south 20 mile an hour winds in Tucson, 15 mile an hour winds in Casa Grande, right around 10 miles an hour here in the valley north of the rim this afternoon. We could see gusts get as strong as 30 miles an hour with sustained winds between 15 and 20 miles an hour and then overnight and into tomorrow those winds die down just a little bit, but then tomorrow Tomorrow afternoon in the Colorado River Valley, Bullhead City, we see stronger gusts again and sustained winds between 20 and 30 miles an hour, and that stretches across northern Arizona into Tuesday. Now for today, right now, temperatures are chilly this morning. We're seeing a few of you dip even cooler, 39 now in Levine, 40 in Maricopa and Chandler at this time, a little bit more mild in Scottsdale Cave Creek and Fountain Hills in the low 50s already. We are going to stay chilly for at least another hour here and and then by 10 this morning, we're in the upper 50s, climbing into the 60s for lunchtime, and the 70s are right around the corner. Second half of the day, I think we warm into the low 70s at that. A high of 73 expected in Scottsdale, Tempe, 72 in Ahwatukee and Levine today, 71 in Peoria and the Deer Valley neighborhoods. Anthem, you might not crack the 70s today. You might stay in the upper 60s as well as Cave Creek, but I think it's still going to be really comfortable out there, very similar to what we saw yesterday. Also very similar temperatures to our south, 73 the high in Casa Grande, 72 in Tucson, Yuma, same temperature for you today. Upper 60s uh, further north along our western border, 68 in Lake Havasu City, 65 in Bullhead City. Still going to be a nice day up in the Sedona area or Prescott if you want to go hiking there, but mild upper 50s for you. And then north of the rim, it is going to be cooler in Flagstaff today, 47 your forecast high. It'll be 52 in Sholo with those stronger winds for you. So 73 that high today with those breezes. Tomorrow, those storm chances move in at 60 percent and it drops our temperatures down to the mid 60s even cooler on Tuesday as rain chances linger at 50 percent. We stay in the 60s through Friday and then slowly start to warm up ahead of the next storm system. Well, the United Food Bank wants to share more love this Valentine's Day by sponsoring a special food drive this week. So all you have to do is text Valentine to 91999 to donate. $5 gives a fresh box of produce. $7 fills a backpack. $25 provides two cases of peanut butter. And $35 helps provide 175 meals. The special promotion runs through Friday. If you are looking for a job, Food City is hosting a job fair in Phoenix this Tuesday for their store at 35th Avenue in Van Buren, which is going to reopen next month. There are about 100 open positions. That job fair runs from 2 to 7 Tuesday at the Victory Outreach, Outreach Church on McDowell. A lot of those applicants, they will be hired on the spot. Well, if all this Oscar talk has you feeling maybe a little bit glamorous, our Smart Shopper team is showing us how to dress for the red carpet on a budget. And ABC 15 is taking action for the more than 14,000 kids in foster care across our state by collecting new personal care and hygiene products like diapers and wipes or blankets and books. Small items that go inside just for me bags, giving comfort to kids as they enter that foster care system. You can drop off your donations with our partners at American Furniture Warehouse in Gilbert or Glendale, or you can donate at abc15.com slash kids. Nearly half of people say that they have a hidden 
bank account or a credit card or maybe even a debt that they are not telling their partner about. Yeah, that's according to a new survey from creditcards.com. But financial experts say the more couples talk about money together, the better off they'll be. It'll help you guys work together as a team to create financial goals. And that way I'll let you reach those financial goals faster, but also create more intimacy and connect a connectedness towards one another because now you're making goals for your future. Well, researchers also linked financial infidelity to other forms of infidelity like compulsive spending and addiction. Well, all week long leading up to the Oscars, we are bringing you exclusive stories. Yeah, that you're only going to see right here on ABC 15, including from our smart shopper, Chelsea Davis. She actually puts together some tips to help you dress up on a dime so that you feel just as fabulous and glitzy as all the glam that we see on the red carpet <laughs> before, during and after the award show. The Oscars are just a few days away, and if you want to dress up like a celebrity but you don't have the red carpet budget, I'm going to help you out with some options. There are many sites that offer advice showing celebrity outfits and how you can find something similar for cheaper. Check out who, what, where, and she knows. There are also budget fashion websites like Budget Fashionista, Frugal Fashionista, and The Budget Babe, to name a few. The Crazy Coupon Lady also shows you how to decode price tags in stores to let you know whether a big sale is coming or if an item is marked down as low as it'll go. Ready to hit the stores? Whether retail or consignment, there are so many. My Sister's Closet, Play-Doh's Closet, Flows on 7th, Buffalo Exchange, Name Brand Exchange, Thread Up. There's the Dillard's Clearance Center, Nordstrom Rack, Last Chance, TJ Maxx, Steinmart, the $3.99 liquidation store in Tempe, and the list goes on and on. About a year ago, I went on a mission with a personal stylist to find an entire wardrobe with $20 or less. We found a vintage gold dress with lace and shine for just a dollar at Goodwill. Though you can also find shoes at all of these places too, I have to tell you about wholesale fashion shoes near 40th Street and Thomas Road in Phoenix. We've seen prices at $8.88 and up, and they offer accessories too. And of course, you always have the option to try a different service out, like Rent the Runway. For all of these links and even more tips, go to our site, abc15.com slash smartshopper. Yeah, so Carissa helped Chelsea out with that uh, Goodwill find. She's an insider and created uh, a fearless, be fearless, created be fearless on a budget, sorry. Uh, she knows when the stores have half off days or dollar days. Yeah, so that's another great local resource here. Yeah, we actually have a lot of fashionistas that have helped us out before with going through Goodwill and they kind of specialize in that of finding those, you know, yeah. hidden gems in there. You just got to be willing to dig for them.